Living things, often called as organisms, share a set of common features. Whether it's a man, a fish, a bacterium, or a mango tree, all have these common characteristics which set them apart from non-living things. Now, there are seven common characteristics, and Mrs. Gren will going to help us understand these. These are movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. Let's look at them one by one. Movement, it's the ability of an organism, or part of it, to change position, or in other words, move. For example, animals like cheetahs exhibit rapid and obvious movement as they hunt their prey. On the other hand, some organisms, like plants, may not seem to move, they actually do. For example, sunflowers turn their heads to follow the sun. Another essential characteristic is respiration. This is a set of chemical reactions that take place in our cell and break down nutrient molecules to release energy for metabolism. If you don't know about metabolism, they are the chemical processes that occur inside a living organism and is essential for keeping them alive. Sensitivity. We can describe it as ability to detect changes in the environment and also to respond to them. These changes can happen internally, like your blood temperature rising, or externally, like high intensity of sunlight during summers. Also, this ability to respond to the change protects us from harm. For example, if you touch a hot iron, your immediate reaction is to pull your hand away. Next, we have growth, which simply means living organisms can permanently increase their size and dry mass. For example, a tiny seed grows into a towering tree, and a baby kitten matures into a full-grown cat. This growth is driven by cell division and differentiation. Note the word permanent. Sometime organisms like pufferfish can get bigger, just for a short time to help to deter predators, but comes back to normal when the threat is gone. This is not growth as the increase in size is not permanent. Another key trait is reproduction, which is the process that makes more organisms of the same kind. For example, bacteria reproduce by splitting into two identical cells, or two parents combining their genetic information to create a genetically unique baby. Next, we have excretion which is removal of waste products of metabolism and also substances in excess of requirements. If we look at the first point, it means getting rid of the waste product like urea or carbon dioxide. If we look at the second point, it means getting rid of things that we do sometimes need, but only get rid of when we have more than we need. So this would include things like water or minerals. Then finally, the last characteristics on our list is nutrition, which is the taking in of materials for energy, growth, and development. All living organisms need nutrients to survive. Plants, for instance, absorb sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make their food through a process called photosynthesis. Animals, like cows, eat plants or other animals to gain energy. So all those having these seven characteristics can be called as an organism. One other thing that all living organisms have in common though, is that they're made up of one or more cells. We will cover cells in depth in upcoming videos. Do note that non-living things can have one or more characteristics from this list, but they will never have all seven of them. For example, car can move thus have ability of movement, but it doesn't possess other characteristics. So there you have it. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition are the seven characteristics that define all living things. Together, they create the fascinating tapestry of life on Earth. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more. Check out other videos in our playlist for more learning.